Hey guys, um, back after a little break. I thought I might be done, but it turns out when you find a nice whiteboard in the dumpster, it gives you inspiration to make a new video. So what are we going to do today? I went through Google Scholar and found a bunch of articles that should help us make the maximum amount of profit we can from investing. Of course, these are all going to be small edges because if everyone knew about these, the edge would disappear. But they do seem to still exist. And if we add enough of them up, maybe on that one day that I find, we could make an extra 1%. Life changing, I know. So first of all, uh, there are some interesting studies about correlation, which don't really do us any good, but are interesting. For example, there was a long time where if the person on the cover of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue was from America or not, had a major correlation with returns or the length of hoop skirts uh, still seems to have some sort of correlation. There's like a three year lag and if the skirts are getting longer, people are gonna end up making more money. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking more about uh, potentially causal relationships, uh, probably by way of behavioral economics somehow, and honestly, mostly probably related to investors' confidence. So let's get going. Number one, we have the new moon. If you break the 30 day cycle into 15 days around a full moon and 15 days around a new moon, it turns out that basically the closer you get to a new moon, the higher your returns are. This could have something to do with enough people feeling some sort of influence during the full moon and getting overconfident and trading aggressively that it impacts the returns a little bit. So new moon is good. Next, we want the temperature to be low. This one doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but it's proven even after the trading centers for stock markets moved away from being centralized in one particular city. Um, so geographically, the traders are dispersed and yet lower temperatures seem to come with slightly better returns. Next up, sports, particularly national sports. You want to avoid them because if there is a big loss, there's going to be negative returns. So I'm thinking, you know, the dream team is playing in the Olympics. If they get unexpectedly eliminated, returns the next day in America are going to be down. Importantly, you need to avoid them because the opposite is not true. There's no impact measured that, you know, if the Red Sox win the World Series the next day, uh, Wayfair, which I think is based out of Boston, has better performance or that, you know, on a national scale, an Olympic victory boost profits. But the opposite of this, if I can get this off, is pre-holiday. This is one of the most well-known effects and it really should have been competed away at this point and yet it keeps persisting. Basically, if there's a three-day weekend coming up or a holiday, the day before that three-day weekend, so generally speaking, it'll be a, a Friday, has significantly higher returns. Like it's it's not even particularly close. So we want to be, you know, before that three-day weekend when people are feeling good. Uh, now we get into two that are probably the most interesting on this. And the first of which is be a woman. Women have shown both as professional investors and as amateurs to have better returns than men. This is again tying back to a lot of this, thought to have to do with something about being overconfident or over trading, getting aggressive at the wrong time. Interestingly, you'd say, well, I'm a guy, so how can I help this? No, if you get closer to a woman, your returns get better. In other words, married men have much better returns than single men. So if you want better returns, go get married. And finally, and most interestingly, be ugly. 
There was a recent study that used some sort of facial scoring algorithm, uh, and it showed uglier people have better returns. Maybe they had to work harder in school, or maybe, who knows, they spend a lot more time looking at computers rather than going on dates. One way or another, being ugly is better. Um, and if you take these last two together, right, the trick for uh, guys would be to get married and then just let yourself go and get ugly. But where do we get then if we put all of these together? What is the best possible day to be investing? So I figure January is more or less the coldest month of the year. There's also an effect that actually the evidence seems to be declining for, so I didn't cover here, called the January effect. So if we look to January, and then we gotta find January where there is a new moon that's in sync with a pre-holiday period. The big holiday in January is Martin Luther King Day. So uh, we looked 2025, it's not gonna work for us. The new moon is all the way at the end of the month, whereas Martin Luther King Day is in the middle of the month. Or we gotta go forward to 2026 to see what's going on there. And that is where we find the perfect day to be buying stocks. Friday, January 16th, 2026. That 18th is a new moon. The 19th is Martin Luther King Day. The Winter Olympics happen in 2026, but we're dodging them because they don't happen until February. So this is the day where of any other day, if you're planning on going all in, that's when you make your bet. And remember, it can help if on that day, you either are a woman or are married to a woman, and if you are as ugly as possible. Thanks for watching, guys.